formulas are three and one. But look at what I have written down here. Okay, I make the statement that x plus five over x is not equal to five. Okay, now I think everybody's okay with warm up part A. You're not going to, nobody's going to tell me that that answer is six. Y'all know that the answer is three. However, when those threes turn to x's, people want to cancel out those x's and say that the answer is five. But that's not the way that it works, okay? Um, you have to be able to combine and then simplify. Uh, the same thing with 10 minus five over five. Nobody's gonna argue with me and say that that answer is 10, unless you type it into your calculator without using parentheses, and then it's still not gonna tell you that it's 10, it's gonna tell you the answer is nine, because uh, it's gonna divide the five over five first, subtract one from the 10. Um, but when those fives uh, turn into sevens with the example that I've got right here, and the 10 is a 4x, some people want to say that that is equal to 4x. It is not, okay? You cannot, when there are pluses and minuses in the numerators and denominators, you cannot just cancel out single terms, okay? I'm getting ready to show you what you can cancel out, but you cannot just cancel out those single numbers or variables, okay? So what we're going to look at today, really right now, all you have to write down is the simplify part. All we're going to cover in the next 10 minutes is simplify. We'll get to multiplying and dividing tomorrow if I don't have to review. Okay? Um, all we're going to look at right now is simplify. We're going to be able to simplify rational expressions in about 10 minutes. Okay, so here we go. Um, first of all, let's establish what a rational expression is. It is the ratio of two polynomial expressions. And I have three different examples there. All three of those are considered rational expressions. You don't have to have a variable in the, in the numerator and the denominator. You do have to at least have it in the denominator. Because if it's just in the numerator, then really it's a linear function. It doesn't look like a linear function, but it really is just a linear function. If the variable is only in the numerator. Or the polynomial. Anyways, as long as you have a variable in the denominator, you're talking about a rational expression. Now, before we get to variables, let's use another real just number example. If I ask you how do you simplify 18 over 4 without using a calculator, how do we simplify 18 over 4? Okay, you want to see how many times 4 goes into 18. It doesn't go in an even number of times, so where do we go from there? They're both divisible by 2, and that's how we simplify this to 9 over 2. So let me write it this way because this is going to help us here in a second. I'm going to express 18 as 9 times 2, and I'm going to express 4 as 2 times 2. Because the only operation that I have in the numerator and the denominator is multiplication, then I can cancel out those twos or look at the fact that two divided by two is one, and that leaves me with nine over two. Okay, because it was only multiplication of these factors, then I could cancel out those twos. That's technically how nine over two is simplified. Let's apply that to variables, okay? All right, so if I give you the expression x cubed minus 4x over x squared plus x minus 2, then I want you to simplify that rational expression. Here's what's going to happen. We want to be able to express the numerator in terms of its factors. We want to express the denominator in terms of its factors, just like we did with 18 and 4. We factored 18 and we factored 4, so we're going to do the same thing with these right here. I'm going to factor the numerator. First thing that we should always look for is a GCF. x cubed minus 4x, it has a GCF of x. So then we've got x squared minus 4 is left. I'm going to do one step of factoring every time. So I'm going to hold the pause button on the numerator. Denominator, that would be x plus 2 times x minus 1. 
I've been factoring for like half my life, so that's why I'm so quick at it. Don't feel bad if you can't do it that quickly, but that one's a pretty simple one, okay? Now, the denominator, that's all the factoring we can do. The numerator, however, can go a step further. X squared minus 4 is the difference of perfect squares. If you're not recognizing that at this point, we got a problem, okay? You should be recognizing when there's the difference of perfect squares. Now, yes, I realize there are pluses and minuses in the numerator and in the denominator, but there are not, we have it expressed as something times another factor times another factor. Denominator. It's a factor times a factor, so you have to look at these as factors. So all we have is multiplication, so we can cancel x plus 2 because it appears in the numerator and in the denominator, but that's the only thing. So we're left with x times x minus 2 in the numerator and x minus 1 in the denominator. I drop the parentheses because there's nothing else down there. Okay. Now, that's as far as you can go. You cannot cancel this x in front with this x right there because that x is attached to that minus 1. If that were x times negative 1, then sure, you could cancel those x's. Because that's x minus 1. It does not match that x in the top perfectly. That's as far as you can go. Okay. You've got to cancel factor for factor. Got a match. Okay, let's do another one. 12 plus x minus x squared over 2x squared minus 9x plus 4. Now, I don't like how that numerator looks because it's not in standard form. And you'll run into that sometimes. You will run into these that are not written in standard form. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. Uh, if you just want to write it above it, that's fine, but for the sake of not confusing anyone, I'm going to take another space right here, and I'm just going to reverse my order. I'm going to write it in standard form. Now, the x squared was negative, so that negative's got to stay with that x squared. The x was positive, the 12 was positive. Um, I'm going to go ahead and factor the denominator while I'm at it, save myself some space and time instead of having to rewrite it over again. Okay, um, it is 2x, we're going to use 4 and 1, because 4 times 1 gives us 4. Well, how on earth is that supposed to work, Miss Redmond, because 4 and 1 do not give me 9? Well, that middle term comes from the outside plus the inside. So when I multiply the outside, 2 times 4, that gives me 8. The inside gives me 1, 8 and 1 is what's going to give me 9. Okay. The numerator, I need to start by factoring out a negative. We don't factor with a negative leading coefficient. So when we take out a negative, it changes all of our signs. Then I can factor into x minus 4 times x plus 3. We've got x minus 4 in the top and in the bottom. So we are left with negative times x plus 3 over 2x minus 1. Uh, now you may see this with that negative distributed. Or because 3 out of those 4 terms are negative, you may see the answer written like this. Those are all equivalent forms of that answer. Okay, those are all equivalent. It's just manipulating that negative. Okay, it's just manipulating that negative, moving it around in the fraction. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. When this is a negative, when the last when the constant is negative, then you're going to have opposite signs. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, most of the time, the only time that that doesn't really work um, is sometimes when you have this coefficient that can play with that. But yes, usually uh, that tells you that the error line there is there. Yes, it does. Okay. So those are factor matrix B, right? Um, but we have to factor. Okay. Now. The numerator, it may not really look like it, but it is the difference of perfect cubes. Okay, the numerator is the difference of perfect cubes. A is cubed, B is cubed, there's a minus sign in between. So let's factor perfect cubes. We've got A and B when we take the cube roots. We square A, we multiply A and B together, and we square B. And we use soap. Same sign. Opposite sign, always positive. The denominator is the difference of perfect squares. Difference of perfect squares, A plus B times A minus B. So we can cancel the A minus Bs. We are left with A squared plus AB plus b squared over a plus b and that is it. That is all you can do to this problem. a squared plus ab plus b squared does not factor anymore. It's really, really close. If that were a 2ab, you could do it, but it's not. So that's it. And a plus b, it's just got to it's got to chill there. Okay? Let's do just a couple more here for the sake of practicing our factoring. Actually, I want you to do D.